Hello and welcome to this new uh, video tutorial. On this video tutorial we will focus on creating the air texture. So I grabbed a couple of those on Pinterest. Um, so we are talking about the same thing but basically what you expect to create is texture where you will lay out your uh, strand, your different strands and you try normally to have lots of variation I mean lots of variation you you still have to care about the texture resolution and uh, the size of your texture but the idea is to make different ones uh, and to be later on able to change from one to another depending on what we have on on the 3d groove like that as you see on this one here and the more variety you have and how you place them you will you know later be able to have something which is believable when you will have enough variation so let's go on this part and if you remember uh, what we have on this uh, previous example from uh, uh, Vadim uh, uh, that I show in the, in the previous tutorial here um, basically just created you create one by one your different strands in the scene and that's usually what people do they're just you know creating strand one by one and then create a scene with everything <coughs> and what we would do here is like we already have created our strand or we are supposed to create them before so let's create a hairboard project and let's call this one like tuto here so Maya will open a couple of things. I would recommend you to leave the outline, the hyper shade, because I have some uh, scripts that are working on the hyper shade, and if you're clicking too fast, you won't be able to have them loaded properly. So you just have to minimize this later on, or even you can close it, or you know put that on your on your other screen. And so we are on this uh, UI here and there is a couple of uh, step and uh, different widget where you will have different uh, functionalities but let's, let's explain them one by one. So the first one is like the strength selection um, widget and in here we have as I said in the previous video different categories of strength so you will create strand and set them into different category and later on when we'll be at this step it's easier to choose from one uh, or another because we can you know hide them and just you know select a couple of them or hide everything show everything etc etc we also have um, uh, a research bar so if we have a name in mind uh, for example if we said like one or one for example here you will see everything that has a one in name so that's a quick tip here you can upload update sorry your strand list library so if someone is like doing something in the background you can update uh, your library so it could be good for people who work uh, on the same uh, folder on the same strand source folder and here you have also the tip that will guide you if you're lost here and you've got cover of them for every 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 step uh, during the way so um, let's start by selecting the strand that we've created together right here and let's see what we have here so we have once again this um, grid and she will have it will have sorry more importance uh, right now because we are supposed to lay down our strand on top of it because in the end what we want is like to have uh, this uh, camera fill with uh, different strand so that's the idea behind it how do we do that uh, first we will as, a, as I said I will click on something here and it will be imported in the scene let me just uh, update the viewport so it looks a bit better for you and for me like this okay so we have here the result uh, here we have the same outliner 
uh, view here so we can you know show the scalp show the uv box show the grid etc etc and we still have our control out uh, middle mouse button uh, marking menu which is working once again so here we can like also expand our um, strand because every time we will import a strand it will be lab labeled as uh, strand underscore zero zero and the name the number of the strand that we are working on and on each um, line of this outliner you will have like a child line where you will have all the description so we could have like 10 description for this trend and you will get the same functionality that we got earlier and also um, with the marking menu you have access like to for example let's say we want to hide this base one here so I can basically do the same thing as clicking on this button but you can access it inside the viewport so you're not forced to go back and forth between Quafure and the viewport so that's it for this part and when we are using Quafure, uh, one thing that I've created is a way to import and load uh, XGen uh, file without corrupting them. And also you will import them and create a copy and you will be able to modify it. So you will have like this, you know, um, strand from the library and I will change it because like I don't like it or the idea is like, you know, we would want to save time but we don't want to repeat everything. So let's make some, you know, uh, little, uh, oh, sorry, some little uh, updates here like that. So we want this to be here and this one to be here. So I just, I'm just like doing nothing really realis realistic for now, like that here and let's add the guide. So I have something different and I can update every parameter. So for this one, I have to, sorry, zoom out a bit because uh, if you're not familiar with xgen uh, the, you have the, um, the refresh if you want to refresh what you've got you need to see the scalp and sometimes depending on where you're looking at you can't update it properly so we can adjust all the parameters on here like the size or i don't know the the, the width the density etc etc you can modify um, the parameters for the deformation here like this uh, like this so you're free to you know create something on top of this face there is one thing that for my part um, is not working and maybe I will find something later on but uh, let, let me try this because maybe it worked and I'm just not aware of that but if we are going to hide a guide here so we are selecting the right description here let's show the guides here and let's add this one here and we will do something crazy with this one like this okay and uh, if we are updating nothing is happening uh, in fact it's quite like chaotic because it's like buggy right now and normally what i should expect to do is to go here go in clamp and in setup maps i should normally be able to um, update this map with this new guide here oh and it's working okay last last time i checked it was not working uh, nicely um but whoa that's a great news so okay it's working <laughs> um okay so fine well it's working better than i expected so yeah you could even add guides um but you know what let's try something different let's try to add this so let's try to move this one here and uh, later on I will add a guide so obviously here I need to refresh it okay and let's add a guide from this point here and do something crazy as well like that okay I think at this point it should be an error because I last time I checked like it created the guides here and not here so let's update things okay oh no it's working like it's working no no it's perfect <laughs> so the tool is even more powerful than before okay so that's the great news and let's try another thing that might be uh, buggy but let's try it together so as i said here that is a point where uh, things can begin to be messy and even crash so if you're not happy 
with the crash or if you just want to be sure you it won't crash you could uh, save it before because yeah, it, it, it will crash but at least you will have a save I won't do it right now because you know I'm just doing some crazy shit here so it will be easier to you know uh, just reload and create a new a new thing from the start so let's click on this uh, button here and uh, yeah by the way this part is actually not um, working if I'm correct here so let's see what's going on and if I can find a way to figure it out um, so what if I can okay so I can paint it but definitely I lost what I get um, from the previous scene so I will just like try to make something like crazy like that here okay and save it and now if I try to update everything so let's reveal the guides uh, oh sorry I was hitting everything okay so yeah it's it's in fact it's working um, it's just what is not working is like you won't get um, what you had before you know before we just painted the line here so that won't work uh, in fact so you will have the possibility to create something new but you know uh, won't be an iteration it will be a variation uh, but I think like we've got like 90% of what you could expect for the gen and I think it's uh, just a little drawback um, but it's I personally I think it's more useful to reuse assets rather than creating the wheel reinventing the wheel every time so for me it's perfect um, so now we've created everything and you know it was just a demo so let's uh, say I'm because they are, I'm, I'm not happy with what I have right now it was like crazy so what can I do here is I can use this button here and this will allow uh, Quafir to reload the strength from its source from in the library so basically you could have two reasons the first one is like I created something crazy and don't like it it's not what I want so I want to get back to the default uh, strength or my friend George is updating the strand and I need this new version in my scene. So what I can do here is I can just click on update. Let's click on this. So it will unload and load it properly. And oh, as you can see here, yeah, so there is something that went wrong is like, um, in fact, it's still um, all the change that we made were uh, on the new version. But unfortunately, one change that we've made has been shared with the library. And this is this mask uh, editing. But uh, also, it's very easy to correct this one. We are not, you know, m creating a map on an entire room. So it would be easy to fix it and redo it uh, in one second. So that's, I, as I said, well, it's like we have 90% of the functionality that are working correctly. And there is just this one, which is not working correctly but I think it's good enough so let's say we are happy with this uh, let's see the the guides so the guides they are their original position here and let's say we want now to have more of them so let's uh, select everything and bring everything on the left here um, one thing worth mentioning is like you could sh select the scalp here by moving them like this um, I'm also creating this UI which will um, select everything and it could have some interest for example if you're moving uh, the scalp here and you're rotating everything is come together and if you're using here you will have a different effect in fact like this one oh no you will have the same uh, yeah there is like they will share the rotation you know so basically it's like you could select if you select here everything from here and that will what you will do most of the time everything will follow here and if you're selecting with this you will have like a, an offset effect that can be interesting uh, but it, which is not necessary so that's up to you um, and also it's sometimes easier to find out which description is which but it's also great to use like vanilla maya function like this 
and move things. So I will just, you know, reset everything here. Um, just, you know, um, set rotation to zero, zero, and maybe go back to what I could have been like, it was like maybe 11 here. I don't know. Okay. Uh, one thing also is like, if I scale, except if I scale this one here, and I like rotate it like that, when I update my um, strand, it will carry on with the current um, orientation and uh, modification that I did on my scalp. So that's some, something which is useful, I guess. Oh, I thought it was useful when I created this. So I hope you like it. Um, so I'm talking in depth about all these things, but let's work on something that can be useful. So let's move this one up like that. Let's bring this rotated here and update this like this. Okay. So let's refresh everything here. And let's let's bring a couple of them here. Um, so when just doing trying things here. Uh, let's try let's try this. So I will open everything and place everything later on. Uh, like that, like that. And uh, these ones. This one. And this one. Okay. Okay. So just let's. Um, so, okay, right away now we can select uh, a couple of them here. I know that I have small ones here, so I will, um, so first I will switch my uh, orientation to world, like that here, and move things uh, where they should belong here. So let's try this one here. Uh, let's try this one here. Okay, this one up. Okay, so let's update everything and see what we've got here. Okay, so basically we have something that should work almost. So let's move things a bit up here and move this one up. Move this one here. This one up here. And same thing here. We have the wizard here. So this one should be. Yeah, maybe this one should be. The guys should be a bit smaller like that and we will move this one up move this one a bit down same for this one here and also we can add uh, like let's say uh, the last one like this one okay and update everything okay so now we are happy with what we have or well, at least we think we had, but you know, the art director will come and say, okay, you know what? Or not, maybe not the art director, maybe too early, but you will try things and say, okay, I don't like, uh, let's say this one, so what can I do? I can delete it and re import a new one and etc. etc. But there are also a feature here, so let's select this one, which is the number three. And let's select this one here, and if you click on your uh, right, uh, mouse button here you have a new uh, pop-up window which open here and basically if you select this uh, number three this trend number oh no sorry it's trend number six sorry it's trend number six so if i click on this one here you will see that the selected scalp will uh, update with a new one so let's click let's wait for it and and voila, everything is imported correctly. So you could change with whatever you want um, just in one click. So let's redo it once again.
okay and you see with a total totally different result in like one click so that's the beauty of it and for every single one of them we can you know select uh, the current uh, description by you know going in the menu and switching to one another so you see it's strand number eight uh, and we can you know display everything for each of them we can use the marking menu to do it so we can you know select this one uh, add the guides add the guides for a particular one like that etc 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 so and also one thing that was mentioning is like the ui here is also we're updating the ui uh, in the viewport and in the tool and now it's time for you to make some shader adjustments so basically you have created all of them with basic uh, shader but what you can do also is to add your own shader and for example let's say we've created a blonde one um, and let's assign this one to this number eight so let's type blonde here and you see here up it was updated with this new uh, color so if we go to a natural black here and select like say this one here and add this uh, black so you have a little text bar here and you can edit it to black as well and let's for example add something crazy like copper um, it's not oh yeah because I did not click <laughs> okay and let's select this one here and select this one to uh, copper. Oh, there is a small issue because yeah, I put the melanin back to one, but yeah, that's a little issue with the script that I will fix uh, before release. But basically, yeah, uh, it was just, you know, uh, if you see here that this parameter, the melanin was put to one and it should have been put to zero. So that's my fault, but it's okay. Um, and so now you, you you're ready to create your texture in fact um, that's the next step and we are going to use this Arnold manager so we have like a couple of AOVs that we can import you're not you don't need to import everything if you don't want any everything but basically you have here uh, okay so I added everything here you have a small uh, guide like all the tool but we also have this gif which will show you what map is which which map is which yeah it's a quick overview so basically we will set up a resolution a quality uh, an image format and a color space a row mean linear and you use use view transform supposed to mean srgb and use output transform is like when you're uh, working with this um color parameter here if you're in your preference preference uh, color syntax somewhere yeah if you're in the color manager you can assign a view transform and for example if you're using, using from ace uh, color format you can switch it here and set this one to uh, use output transform and once you're ready to do it uh, you can click on bake and it will select uh, all or the selected layers or AOVs and you can you know switch them on or switch them off so let's create a bake selection uh, I will pause the video because it will take some minutes uh, it depends on the quality obviously and also it depends on uh, your computer um, uh, mine, mine is not that good so it will take a long time if I was going for a very high resolution with high quality detail so I won't do it right now and also before I use them let's talk about how we create lighting basically what is happening in the background it this hidden group would be shown during the render the render so we have like a, 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 a background here which will switch color from you know blue if it's normal map uh, green if it's a uh, flow map etc etc but you can hide it if you don't like it so if you don't like this to happen you just have to hide this one here so even when we will hide or unhide this group this one will be hidden so it's up to you you can do it or you can keep it and here we have the lights and the lights for now is just like uh, a default uh, ai sky dome light but you are free to do whatever you want just have to put your lighting inside this group and 
when you will render it, it will be shown and used as render light. So it's up to you. You can customize whatever you need, whatever you want. It's up to you. For me, this is good enough. I have to admit, I wasn't really, really interesting into uh, tweaking this parameter, but you know, you can do it. Um, okay, so I just need to update everything here okay and in fact we don't need to update everything uh, just for the record it's just like uh, arnold will update everything anyway so let's click on this one and let's uh, wait a few minutes so it's Okay, so we are back on track here and Arnold is uh, ready. We have everything here. So basically we can select every texture by clicking on this um, green button here. Or we can also open the folder right away. And um, Maya will open the grid folder here for you and you will pick your texture and do whatever you want. So you have the result here and you can you know adjust them uh, later on. So let's talk about them a few seconds first uh, we have here um, an iteration folder so each time you save uh, you render something it's saved it's saved sorry it's saved inside this iteration so you could you know tweak things and keep editing and stuff without losing what you had before that's for you and also um, inside the different maps that we have here for example if I select these ID maps uh, not this one, sorry. Uh, those uh, random hair map. Uh, basically, what we have is like we have three different random values. For example, the um, let's start for the red one. The values are random between zero to one. When it's on this one here, it's random with between zero to hundred. And when you are here, it's between zero and thousand variation of different colors. So you have three of them. Or you have one it's, it depends how you want to use it and also if you're looking at the gradient map here it's basically three gradients at the same time so we have one starting from the bottom to the top one starting from the middle and one um, from the top so for now I have a, like a glitch here I don't know how to solve it for now uh, so you might have you know to paint this area into black now uh, that's the only workaround I will fix this in the future but uh, I don't know because I'm supposed to use a flat shader and it's like we have like some um, lighting artifacts so for now it's not working as it expected to work but I think it's still a great um, way to create ramp or you could also paint ramp from you know just you know applying a ramp on the texture uh, there is also many possibilities to add ramp um, but yeah I will fix this later but I could not find a solution before the release so that's it okay and so the last thing what we can say about the, the Arnold manager is that we can adjust the shader and the render pass for some of them except this one the random hair um, the random hair color is different it's using color parameter that I will um, bring into a tutorial in, um, in a few weeks um, but for now if you want for example to say to change the height map because the height map um, is depending it's basically a grade it's there is a gradient apply on the result and it could change significantly the way the height map is looking so you might need to tweak this one so for example if I'm going here in the, in the sorry I will open the result here and I'm going to show you what we have here as in the height map this one is pretty dark so I might need to change it so what we can do here is like you can click on start editing it will bring the lightings uh, in the scene so you could for example uh, do your own test using your own uh, render view of uh, Arnold like that but we won't do it um, however, it will also uh, bring the hyper shade and open the right tab because each time you will open it, that's why you don't need to kill 
the hyper shade right away. Uh, it will create a tab with all the shading information for each different uh, views like this. So in the height map here, I know that if I change the contrast uh, pivot like that here, and I restart uh, a new bake here, so I won't select everything than just this one here. I will just click on end editing before, and even if you don't, normally it should do it internally uh, and end editing anyway. So you click on back selected here. Okay, and let's see what we've got here. So yeah, if we compare to what we had earlier, and because it's saved as an iteration, as I said, you will have a very different result uh, from this one and this one. So you could do this for all the different AOVs, it's up to you, you can tweak however you want. Okay, so one other thing that you can do here is you can convert everything to a geometry and create a texture elsewhere. For example, I know that people, some people like to do this in the X normal because they don't like Arnold or they don't have it, so you could do it as well. So the idea is like you can click on this button and it will convert everything into a poly strip. And you might be wondering what is a poly strip. Uh, basically it's just a thin line of polygon. And we have here the version which is a poly tubes which are in fact like small tubes. And you have the choice between the two of them. I would only show the poly strip because the tubes take a few moments to convert. So let's create some poly strip here so if I you know oh sorry hide the description because they're on top of it you can see that it's just like normal uh, polygon uh, strip and nothing more um, one thing that you can add here also is like you can create some shuffle group here that will assign randomly a shader for each um, strength and the more groups you have the more shader you have the more variety you have and this could be useful if you want to create some map out of it. So let's click on shuffle here. And everything is now created. And here we have like different, different color assigned to it. And you can export this result to create your texture. That's it. Um, so let's bring everything back here. So we are now almost down. It's now time for us to create uh, the UV template. So that's one of the idea behind Quafur is like you will create template with UVs, in fact UV shell. And later on in the next tool, each time you will click on a button which represents the strength, the UV cards will be um, assigned to this UV. So you, won't, you no longer need to fix the UVs by yourself, one by one or group by group. And if, if you've created air before, you know what time consuming could be like you don't like for example let's say you know um let's say one day I'm, I'm not happy with the way those hair are on this texture so i'll maybe you know try to change everything like okay let, let, but you know what let's do it um let's see what we have here where are the scalp here so let's say we want okay i don't like this one this one will be here and this one will be here okay so from this point here, you would just rebake everything. So it takes some time, but you could do something during it. And later on, on your 3D object, in the grooming step, you will need to change the UVs for all those one here and all for and for all those one because they are not correct anymore. So you would have to change everything one by one, or maybe you had some group that you will need to change them. And you know, so then when you have too many uh, objects selected and you try to work on the UVs if they have lots of subdivision which can occur when we are working on you know high quality asset uh, it can be came to be it, oh, sorry it, it, it could turn to turn out to be like laggy or buggy and with this work around with the UV template you won't have to do it anymore because we we'll just have to reload the template and everything will be updated uh, to the last version. So let's see how we can do it. So we open this uh, little window here and basically it's creating a UV editor because basically I've just recreated the UV editor so it's the same thing here. 
and it will bring our texture because we created a texture earlier but you could also create a texture uh, UV template for any kind of texture that you have from another software because I know that there is various ways to create this type of texture of Photoshop or whatever and you can access this tool uh, right from the beginning of Quafure um, in the tool you have the possibility to use to use this template editor but uh, since we are doing everything according to the books uh, we have here uh, the texture that we baked earlier which is already loaded and now we are ready to create some UV shells so let's create them so we have three ways to do it we can do it from here we can do it from here or we can press N inside this viewport and let's create this one called R1 and we will pick uh, let's say orange because it will be this one here and one thing we can see here is like we have the um, shortcuts for the canvas here because I created something which is a bit different from what you have in the outliner on uh, the sorry on the normal UV editor but basically you can zoom in out like that you can pan using alt uh, the view is constrained around this texture but normally you should not you should not need to go across this one here at least for now it's not permitted uh, later on I will add, uh, add the opportunity to work this way normally it, sh it should already work but I've not tested it because I know that some people won't uh, so, sorry some people prefer to have like uh, rectangular UVs for hair instead of square ones um, normally it should work right now uh, it's just two or three parameter to check um, but it will in the, in the near future it will work for uh, zero to two uh, UVs uh, texture so you will click on Control T to open this um, transform editor uh, and basically it's like working in Photoshop so you just move those uh, red dots to fit your uh, texture like this so I just move this a bit and Voila, like that. I know that sometimes that could be a bit tricky to select, but uh, really it was like a pain to create this interface. I, this interface I learned a lot, and I also cried a lot because Maya was crashing all the way uh, during the development. So it's working and it's stable; it's not uh, crashing anymore. And you can also adjust the parameter from this outliner here, and you can you know change the color, change the name, change the position. And you can add a couple of them. Uh, let's say hair two, like that. Okay. Let's create this one here and scale it once again, like that. Okay. And we can go for it every time, every time. And you know, we are lazy artists, and I'm very lazy. So I created something different. Um, if you remember the UV box here, uh, they are supposed to fit the UVs. Uh, now they are not because this one is was rotated uh, and not done properly. But if you see here, it should work. And those one were just poorly created. Like I forgot to edit them. But it's good because we will show how to fix this. I just you know select everything and you know uh, changing the position here here so this step have, has two advantages first it's in the viewport and you know uh, for my part it's like very fast to edit from this view and also for those one who were like not edited and which was already at the correct position well you don't have anything to do it's already set in the correct position and now what we can do is like we would just delete oh sorry I'm lost okay let's select from here and just I will just you know select and delete here okay um, and now I can just you know um, use this button update with box UVs and everything gets created automatically so they all have uh, the right position as you can see here the those one are wrong because the texture is not up to date so let's quickly you know um, let's rebake this one oh sorry I didn't select anything 
Okay, let's rebake the diffuse and you will see that the template will be updated as well. And that's the true power of quackers, like you can iterate, change stuff, go back and forth, uh, work together with different people, uh, update things um, without you know losing anything. Uh, you will, you know, also okay benefits from the different updates, uh, save time, and uh, yeah, now you can work on this process uh, with iteration. And for my part, at least, it was not possible before. So I hope that you will like this new uh, possibility that my tool offers to you. And we are at the back, the the last step of this. Uh, part uh, and tutorial and step by the way so we have to take a picture to save our templates here and we can save the current progression so if you're working with people it's important to see uh, who is working on something and what is the current update so let's bring this to done and maybe sometimes someone will be able to load this one and check if it's going right or wrong or if you're working alone, it's still a good way to see your current progress. So you can just click on save and we are ready to move forward. Um, so as I said, you can reload it. So you can reload this texture here or other ones. Uh, let's open this one here, for example. And the tool will uh, bring you the possibility to update everything. Uh, so let's see here. Let's go back to this. Okay. Let's select this one and change this like that and let's update everything. And voila. So that's the true power of Quakure. Of uh, iteration, modification as fast as possible and step, step by step process. And yeah, that's it. So um, I will wait you for the next tutorial, which is about, uh, which will be about uh, 3D grooming. So take care and see you then, bye.